Hi, my name is Loretta and I live in Japan. Hi, I'm Noriko Akazawa. I'm a Gyosei Shoshi lawyer. I help people to apply for a visa in Japan. A lot of you guys have been asking me about my job and visa situation, and I figured rather than just tell you my understanding of it, I would bring on a professional, Akazawa Sensei. She is the lawyer here in Japan who took care of my entire visa process as I transitioned into work life in Japan. So can you explain a little bit about who you are and what it is that you do? Okay, I'm Noriko Akazawa. I'm a Gyosei Shoshi lawyer. Gyosei Shoshi lawyer is a type of legal profession and we are authorized to prepare a legal document to submit to the local and national government. The very important yeah, stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Especially for me. In English, a lot of times, at least in the States, we call this like immigration lawyer. Yeah, what I do is very similar to the immigration lawyer in the in America. Okay. The specializing area varies depending mm. on the person. Personally, I'm specializing in immigration procedures and immigration laws. So, what are some standard visa examples and what are kind of like the more common ones that you're used well, to seeing? Actually, there are about 30 different visa categories okay. <laughs> altogether. <laughs> oh my god. The law changes very quickly, especially these days. Yeah. So it's you know, almost impossible to cover everything today, but the one is like a, a engineer, specialist mm -hmm. in humanities, international services, very long name, but this is one visa. This is one? Okay. One visa. If you are a company employee, most people fall into this visa status. Okay. Like, if you want to start your own business, mm. maybe business manager. Business manager. To for this, you have to invest uh, about 5 million yen yourself. Uh, you have to have a good business plan yeah. and you have to have a physical office. Mm -hmm. Most people think that business manager, the mm -hmm. hardest part is the 5 million, 5 million yen, yeah, right? 5 million, yeah. Which is about $50,000. Most mm -hmm. people think that's the hard part, mm -hmm. but the hardest part usually mm -hmm. that I've heard is the office. Yeah, office requirement is very difficult. It's, people think, you know, maybe shared office or virtual office is okay, but no. It, it's, it's not. No, no not that. <laughs> right? See, I, I've, I've heard horror stories of mm. trying to get the office and they spent money setting up virtual or shared office and it's, it's not okay. No. And no. some people advertise that they're like no. the correct, mm. they're the type of office that you need and they're not. Mm. So it's like... <laughs> if you search on internet, some information collect, some information not. Points. Yeah, so you have to be very careful. That's why uh, there are yeah. people like you to help. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> There's obviously a student visa. A student visa. Yeah. It's one of my favorites because <laughs> this is what I did. Dependent. Mm -hmm. If you most of the work visas, um, you can bring your dependent mm -hmm. spouse or child, mm -hmm. children to Japan. Can student visas also bring a dependent? It's conditional. Japanese language school student cannot bring the dependent. Oh really? Okay. This is news to me. If you are uh, attending to your college or university, mm. yeah, it's possible, but it depends on the, well, the program you are, you know. You mm. uh, there's a condition oh, yeah. where you have to show how much money you have because right, right, right. they're depending on mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. So you have to prove that you have enough money mm -hmm. to let them yeah. depend on you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's important. And uh, for my situation, it was easy because I just had to get a proof that I was still receiving my scholarship because that was enough. And the, the amount changes every year and it changes by how many dependents you bring, like spouse and child would be different. Mm -hmm. But my situation was easy, but your language school is... No, it's not that hard. At, at least as of this video. The, the law changes all the time, but... At least today. This year, there's a new um, visa introduced. If you graduate uh, from Japanese uh, university and if you have any one certificate, Japanese language certificate, you can partially engage in like a service or a manual work. Like hotel yeah, type hotel, of thing? Yeah, restaurant, factory. Interesting. What is this one called? called? Oh, it's called a designated activity. Designated activity is a one visa category. Okay. But it includes a lot of different things. Activities. <laughs> different activities.
did. Yeah. So, 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 so this one is new, mm -mm -mm. but it's within a, within a designated activities. I know some friends mm -hmm. who they're N1 and they're very, very talented, mm -hmm. but they don't want to work full time in an office situation. They want to do something more creative or they want to be more flexible. So mm -hmm. maybe this is a possibility, yeah. maybe. Yeah, yeah. Back to my favorite, the highly skilled mm -hmm. visa. Can you kind of explain? It's, it's like a upgraded version of other regular working visa. Okay. So now you have a specialist in humanities visa. Mm -hmm. It's a mm -hmm. point-based system. Mm -hmm. So if you have enough points, you, your visa is like upgraded to highly skilled professional and you have some merits. You can bring your parents or sponsor a housekeeper mm. that's under certain conditions. So what you said this is an upgrade, what types of visas upgrade into? Most of work visas you can yeah upgrade to, I mean I mean change to mm. yeah highly skilled professional visa. Based on the points. So, yeah, it's based on the point. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so this kind of leads into my next question. I, I think of this highly skilled professional visa mm -hmm. as kind of like the holy grail mm -hmm. of visas because Asia. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, that's right. Yeah, it's uh, a fast pass to permanent residency. Yeah. Which makes everything easier because then you don't have to prove your visa all the time and you're kind of more stable and buy property like a house because mm -hmm. you yeah. can't you can't buy a house you can if you pay in cash but <laughs> you want to use you know loan okay i in a whole different video i did renting apartments mm -hmm. people were saying tokyo prices are so expensive why don't you just buy a house mm -hmm. and for my visa mm -hmm. it's a lot more difficult Mm -hmm. because yeah. I'll need cash. So then, then it's chicken and egg. How do you say chicken and egg in Japanese? <laughs> There's a lot of these chicken and egg things with visa and applications. But for me personally, being a woman, if I can have a more stable environment, because this is my visa, it's very attractive because then if my physical situation changes, mm -hmm. Wink, wink. If I decide to start a family, that'll kind of change my visa track. For example, highly skilled visa. I understand you have to do the same thing for three years consistently. With that in mind, uh, being able to get a stable situation as quickly as possible is very attractive to me. So that's why I like highly skilled visa. Can you explain what my visa used to be, what it is now, and kind of like the process of changing Especially, was there anything difficult or weird about my application? <laughs> well, the son had a student visa. Then she just graduated from the university. When she came to me, she was wondering to do to work like a freelancer under multiple contracts. Mm -hmm. So she didn't know if it's possible or not. Maybe this was kind of a headache for you. <laughs> Most people graduate and then do shushoku katsu and start one company. Because of my background, I already worked in New York. I already had EQ. And because of my thesis, I ended up working with so many different companies. It was impossible to only choose one. I came to Noriko-san basically saying, can you turn my life into a visa <laughs> because this is a, a little complicated. Yeah, it looks complicated, but when you <laughs> think of a uh, visa requirement, well, every visa has a set of requirements. Mm -mm. She had a multiple contract with good companies, that was very good. As long as one of your company can uh, be your sponsor and mm. sign the document mm. and provide the uh, company information. That, mm. Yeah, I said that's possible. Really, it's not that different mm -hmm. from one company right. because mm. it's still the same mm. paperwork plus mm. extra paperwork <laughs> from extra companies. <laughs> yeah. So the extra part is you have to show all the contract mm -hmm. and you are making sufficient income. Mm -hmm. When I think at this point when you started explaining the how much income, the mm -hmm. income requirement, you mentioned that looking at the highly skilled professional visa was possible. That's when we started mm -hmm. 
possibly looking at this this long point system. I should have used you more because I'm a busybody. You offered so many times, like, let me do it, let me do it, let me take care of it. I was like, no, I got it. The the issue is that we ran out of time. As soon as you graduate, you want to move into your next situation. We tried to aim for all of these points, but what are we, we were missing five points at the end? Yeah, something like something that. Like that. Very, very close, but it, we ran out of time. You know, let's let's upgrade next time. Was I difficult? I was just a little bit worried. <laughs> what do you think are some good things to start organizing beforehand? You know, you have to be always aware of your expiry date of your visa. Never overstay. Yeah. Okay. It, it will be. It will cause serious problem. <laughs> you could get deported or you know. yeah. so never overstay. Mm. When you change your uh, workplace, mm. when you graduate uh, school, mm. when you divorce or in any case, when when your situation change, you there's a uh, notification form to mm. submit to the immigration bureau. You have to notify the immigration bureau properly. It's very important to be consistent, especially if you are thinking about applying for a permanent residency. Mm. When you apply for permanent residency, you mm. have to provide all the information, you know, of the, your past activities. All the more paperwork. For the rules and regulations. Can, you know, don't be a criminal. <laughs> <laughs> be a good person. Uh, there was something else you mentioned to me mm. about being careful about the work permit situation. Mm-hmm. My previous visa, I mm-hmm. talked about working while I was a student. Mm-hmm. I was working mm-hmm. under the specific oh. permission to do right. activities outside of my designated right. activity. Okay. <laughs> it's a very long name. It's a very long name. But, <laughs> but it's basically a part-time yeah. permit. Yeah, so it's like official, you have to apply for it. You can't just start working, you have to get this paperwork. That's right. You cannot work. Uh, beyond 28 hours mm. per week, mm. it will be strictly checked when you change your status to work visa. What countries have you worked with before? <laughs> what types of people? <laughs> people from all over the world, mm. different type of job, like a chef, housekeeper, mostly company employees, mm. business managers. Mm. And of course, I handle like a family-based visas, like mm. spouse of Japanese national child of Japanese national. And student. Student, of course. Yeah. You have some kind of like a special mm. connection. So I worked and saved money and went to America and went to... Uh, I studied from uh, community college, yeah. then transferred to university, then finished bachelor's degree, then came back. So I know how it's like being a student in a foreign country. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I really liked working with you because... <laughs> It, it's just like, you, you understand. <laughs> I did a video recently talking about my new visa and work situation, and one of the biggest questions I got was asking, basically, do I have to get a lawyer? I don't want to spend the money. Can I just do this myself? A visa. You don't have to, especially if you are employed by a big company, mm. they are, you know, used to the procedure. Mm, mm, mm. Maybe you don't have to. Definitely. Just, just ask the... Uh, HR department, mm. they, they can help. You don't have to use a lawyer no. if you're a normal mm. big company type of yeah, situation. If, yeah, if, if someone can help, no need to use You know, there's obviously a fee for your services, mm-hmm. but I think it's very reasonable. Like yeah. in New York, lawyers, ah. your fee is like by the hour in New York. <laughs> so, so I was very, very comfortable That's working right. with you. Yeah. Maybe if you don't have a mm bachelor's degree but you have 10 years of experience or if you have multiple contracts like Mm -hmm. me or something like that. Mm -hmm. I think if you are any bit confused Mm -hmm. and busy Mm -hmm. and kind of a messy personality (laughs) or you just like extra help, I really think it's much better to just Mm -hmm. have a professional look at it with all the new visa options Mm -hmm. coming out and it's just easier to use <laughs> professional. You know, if you do it yourself, you mm. have to go to the immigration bureau at least two times. I know Shinagawa is... It's like a crazy... It's, it's a nightmare. <laughs> nightmare every day. <laughs> <laughs> so I can do it on my behalf. Yeah, what, 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 else, what else do you... Um, yeah, I basically hear your story, hear mm. your advice, you know, what is the best option, which, you know, which ways you should go and mm. help you... To collect the document, and I can even 
talk to your employer when we were talking I said maybe I want to do this maybe I want to do this and you were like okay hey 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 hey, hey. <laughs> let's let's hear the full story and we sat down and you basically mm-hmm. built the picture that makes sense you were the first one who told me that I was close to getting the highly skilled professional mm-hmm. and things like that so things you may not even know about for example this new visa you have the newest information because you're mm-hmm. always I feel like you're always running to yeah, yeah, yeah. immigration <laughs> here <laughs> it's like we'll hold it up so obviously do what's most comfortable for you but you know if you have even a slightly confusing situation or if your employer is saying something weird leave it to the professional <laughs> and and let you get in there and do the rest well then do you have any like final tips or any advice that you'd like to share before we before yes, we go um everyone has you know every different story and background and situation so if you are not sure what you know visa to apply or any questions contact me yeah definitely through, through my website I'll leave the link down there for you guys. You also, in addition to your visa processing services, you also offer like consultation as well. So if you just want to ask like a question, you know, you can always like set up a consultation and just start from there. So there's there's more like every year I'm like, <laughs> like sending more to you. I, I really liked working with you and the fact that you're bilingual. Um, but with things like Visa, I just prefer to be able to speak in English if I want to to clarify. So yeah, so that that's really helpful as well. 2020, if you're changing visas or even looking to come to Japan, do you do new? Sure. Yeah. So if you're looking to come to Japan and you're not here yet, you can obviously reach out and... Yeah, you can use a contact form from my homepage. Okay, so I'll leave all of the information below and uh, feel free to leave any comments in the comment section below. Mm -hmm. And I will see you in the comments. Ja. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I will see you in my next video. See you there. Bye.